Simeon Company Advocates. I've practiced family law for the last 26 years. Prior to 2014, we, the court was warm to other forms of marriages, marriages which are not registered. And what you needed to do is to apply to the court to find there is a marriage and then proceed to dissolve that marriage. That was happening for the so-called common law marriages. The customary marriages where the formality was not very clear and come we stay. Then come 2014, we have an Act of Parliament which clearly defines what is a marriage and the marriage must be registered. So we are in a period of transition. Uh, the question being, what should we do with unregistered marriages? Uh, why I raise this issue of marriage is because you've got to prove marriage before you go to matrimonial property issues. Matrimonial means marriage. So this must be marriage, uh, property acquired during marriage. You've got to prove marriage first, then you show what you have acquired together. So if you're in a situation today where you don't have a formal marriage or statutory marriage, but you've been staying together for many years, and your union has a look of a marriage, you still have to go to court and apply for the court to find this marriage after they find there is a marriage, now you can apply for your share of matrimonial property. So the answer to that question is, yes, you can try, but you've got to prove marriage first. It's a judicial process. Uh, it's an issue of calling witnesses. Uh, we're in transition, so the court is coming up with various ways of handling these old, uh, these unions that had a look of marriage. Um, you may be lucky, you may find a judicial officer who is persuaded that your union is a marriage. But there are some people who will fall out of uh, the path simply because maybe their unions in terms of look, you don't have that element of marriage. Yes, they can. Simply because the act states what is contribution uh, to the acquisition of matrimonial property. We all understand that to run a home, is you need money but that's not the only thing you need you need to run the, the establishment itself for example the aspect of domestic labor uh, so if one person is working outside bringing in the shillings and the other person is working in the home setup making the, the family comfortable that would call contribution so it's an appreciation of the fact that uh, it takes beyond money to run a home that the law has captured other forms of contribution beyond the monetary. So child care is one contribution. It is child care, not child birth. Because if it's child birth, then men will never have that kind of contribution. So it's child care. The other thing is the running of domestic um, affairs, the running of the home, keeping the shirts clean, other clothing, it can be by the way a man claiming for other, I mean, other forms of contribution. Uh, keeping the dining table full, food is ready, it's warm, it's, it's, it's facilitating um, the well-being of the family. That is a contribution. School support, doing homework, going for games, you know, cheering your daughter in the swimming competition. Anything that promotes the well-being of your child, it could, it can form, uh, you can, it can amount to contribution. The farm labor, which is where most of our mothers are in the villages, is a big form of contribution. It's, we are talking about milking cows, we are talking about picking coffee and tea, taking it to factory, that is contribution. Or general care of the farm where people are feeding from. So there are many other forms of contribution. We have moved beyond strict monetary contribution, mainly in appreciation of it takes more than money to run a home. This is developing jurisprudence because it's only in 2013 we came up with the Matrimonial Property Act. It is in 2014 that we registered polygamy and now said you can have several wives 
and you get all registered. Everybody is having a certificate. So in the scenario that one of them decides it's time to go, um, we would treat it more like a company. So the law says, if the first wife, uh, I guess if, okay, if it's first wife going, the monogamous scenario will apply. It means the others, where the others have not come. Uh, but if the man declares I'm bringing wife number two, this is not what the act is, this is my interpretation, uh, then the man should declare I am bringing. So at that point the law says separate what is, divide what is there. In the portion of the contribution that the two parties have put in. The third party comes in, now being the second wife. Uh, then the property now, if if there was exit after that and it's a second wife exiting she'll get a share of what is acquired from the time she came to the point she's departing it is a confusion that's how i would put it uh, because it's new law uh, not many people have gone to court under this scenario so we are all looking forward to see what jurisprudence the courts are coming up with but you get a share of what is acquired during your stay. But the law also says that a man can also acquire property with one spouse out of the many. It will be separate from the big pot where everybody is claiming from. Of course, you know what that means. It simply means more traveling families.